Welcome to Professor Charms in Linux. Let's see if we can get this just a bit louder. There we go. Okay, uh, today we're going to be looking at another BSD. This is going to be Ghost BSD. I did True OS a couple of days ago uh, using the Luna desktop, which drove me nuts, I must admit. And I was able to install XSC near the end of that video. But anyway, we got Ghost BSD today, and Ghost BSD all already comes with XFCE. And as you can see, I've already made up the uh, Virtual Box Manager for it. I've already made up the Virtual Machine. So I gave it 4 gig of RAM and two processors, just as before, 128 megabytes, as before, and a 16 gig hard drive. So let's save this. Go, so I'll click start. Okay, live session. We go to a slightly different group screen. And this reminds me a bit of our Mac boots. So I'll let that boot up, see what happens here. This will take a couple of seconds, I believe. So, this is the first time I've booted this, but I did see sort of an XSCE4. Yeah, so. Oh, we've got to a login screen, and it's giving me Ghost BSD, so. I don't know if I need a password. No, apparently I don't. And it does have a guest edition installed already. Oh, that'll do me nicely. So if I uh, take that to a full screen, and at the moment we've got a grey background, and I believe the panel will be on top. Yes, it will. Okay, we've booted to a desktop. And as you can see, we have the panel at the top. And I've got a system tray and so on, and some icons on the desktop. Uh, we've got trash, file system, home, GhostBSD installer, yep. And the configuration file. So we'll install on here before we'll go any further. And I'm not quite sure whether that's double click or whether I've just clicked it about 18 times. So anyway, actually for our language it's English and I say yes we are English. Or at least I am. Um, keyboard layout. Okay, let's see if I've got something that looks a bit more uh, English for me. Is it? United Kingdom? Yes, we do have United Kingdom. We have United Kingdom. And I will test it here by using the app. Yes, we have a proper US, UK keyboard there. So I'll go to next. It's asking my time zone, and that'll be in Europe. Although not for long, I'm just saying. And next. Yep, we'll do a UFS full disk configuration. We'll just let it go. And install only BSD bootloader. Yep, okay. Uh, we'll check that disk because that disk we want to use and it's going to use the uh, GPT partitioning system we'll let that carry on and it's telling me it's going to make a a swap size of 4 gig that's fine ok it's now asking me for my root password uh, which is telling me it's super weak uh, yes that's fine and now it's going to ask me for my name. And my... I'll just use this. Okay, in the shell will be fish, but I'm sure... I assume I could use others. Yep, we can use SHCSH. SH, but I'll, use, I'll stick to... Actually, I'm going to change that to bash, because I'm used to bash. Just in case I do need anything. So anyway, this part of the installer is going to take a little bit of time. It is, so I'll exit out of full screen now and I'll pause the video until the installer is done. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, I'm back and as you can see the installer has completed and that took roughly about 6 minutes, 7 minutes. And that's okay, that's not too bad at all for an install. And it's saying to me I can either continue, use the live environment or I can restart. I will restart. 
but I may have to stop the restart to release the ISO because as far as I'm aware it may not let go of the ISO I will find out in the first boot anyway and if need be I'll just stop the first boot be cruel to it remove the ISO so anyway it's syncing the discs and I'll find out whether yep it's on the live session again so bear with me I'll have to uh, sort of like close this I'll just power off the machine a second and I'll go to settings and storage and if I remove disk from virtual drive from there as you can see it's empty so this will be booting up the installed installed uh, medium instead of the and there we go so I've just asked it to carry on there I pressed enter rather quickly without even reading the rest of the options I had but the first one is usually the one that I need so anyway it's okay. asking me for my username and password and as you can see I'm back into the uh, desktop okay now it's a wonderful wallpaper they used and I'm glad they used it in their version of etc et scale um, to bring in with the new user and on the uh, top here we have we have our menu of course and we have a uh, minimize so it's show windows basically uh, show the desktop uh, we have the network manager we have a little usage meter up here this is we tick it over we have to log out and of course we have a, a volume which is muted and it's probably muted because it has not picked up anything from sound so let me run the audio mixer oh it has it's just muted anyway so that's fine okay well uh, what we'll do then is look at through the menus and see what ghost bsd has for us if you remember rightly the other version the true os didn't have much installed at all so anyway in the favorites column here we have the terminal emulator file manager mail reader web browser but we won't do that right now we'll have a look in accessories we'll go to accessories we have the application finder which you will find the launch apps Ball green name, you have Clipman which is a clipboard manager, you have Contron which is the X compositor, so help with screen tearing and so on if any exists. We have GVIM which is based on Vim which is a graphical version of Vim. Uh, we have Image Viewer to view images naturally. We have MacePad as a text editor which is for XSCE. And we'll see what version of that is actually. And that did open really quickly. 0 0.4.0. .0. Okay, that's cool. What else do we have? And if I sound a bit sniffly, I am a little bit, I must admit. Um, let me see. Accessories, which is where we were. We have notes. We have orange. Global time. We have plank. <coughs> Stupidly simple, it says. Uh, Plank is a dock, um, I believe, which will, yep, dock down the bottom here, which gives direction all that business. I'll leave that. Oh, I'll, I'll actually, uh, oops, it looks like we've got Firefox in our thing, though. I'm just wondering if we can kill Plank off, because normally if you go in between, no, I'm not going to have much luck to die, am I? Um, I could probably kill that later. I'll just leave Doc running for now. That is my own fault. But anyway, we have Doc. Let's go back to accessories. Uh, we have our root terminal. Uh, we have a screenshot taker, a task manager. We have the Thinar file manager here. Thinar here. And it looks like it's using that waiter or something similar for the... Uh, Folders, a rather tiny brown icon set there. 
and it's uh, a Suno 1.6.12 which was dated back to 2012 by look so I'm not quite sure Suno is actually a lot newer than that or a newer version rather or well, I'm sure they should be back to accessories we have Vim we have XR Kyber for our zips and whatever files, tar, tar files etc and we have XF Burn which is the XFCE uh, CD burner it's telling me there's no CD burners available which is fine because I haven't got one so yep we can do audio CDs, data composition and it's interesting that there's no icons in the in the selections there um, XF Burn is 0 0.5.4 For those who still have optical media to burn. Okay, education. We have Libre Math in the education on the graphics. We have a document viewer for our PDF files, etc. We have uh, an image viewer again. We have LibreOffice Draw, Rosetta, image viewer, which is quite a nice little image viewer. And we have Shopwell for organising your photos. So no GIMP or anything. On the internet, we have the Firefox web browser. We'll look at Firefox if it opens. I can see the little hourglass there next to the handle it she has opened. Okay, it's telling me that Firefox is out of date. <coughs> it's telling me there's been a lot of language packs as well. Oh, wow. So let's uh, have a look. Yes, yeah, 56.0.2 it is quite an old version of Firefox. Okay. We'll look closer. Look. Let's kill that. Also on the internet, we have the Ghost. PSD IRC which will go to the RRC channel for the Ghost PSD. We have HixChat which is also the IRC um, client that probably that links to. We have the Pigeon Internet which sorts a lot of um, chat protocols in one place. And we have the Thunderbird browser, uh, Thunderbird browser, what I'm about, email client which also is going to be taking a while to load even though this is actually running off an SSD okay yeah it's asking me for stuff that I don't want to give and we'll go to helping about here about Thunderbird 52.4 uh, that's good for those who have broken extensions in Thunderbird <laughs> with the later ones I do believe 6 breaks a few extensions Okay, that's the internet category. Well, let's see what we have in the multimedia. We have an audio mixer. And the audio mixer here is just a simple one. And then as you change, there is no pulse audio like there was in um, in the previous 12 S I did. That did actually run pulse audio, but this seems to be running OSS. So it's a straight line to the uh, mixer there. Also on the mixer media we have cheese for our webcam and so on. We have Excel, which is, seems to be a music player. And it is. And we'll look at Excel here. And Excel is 3.4.5. I'm just wondering if I downloaded a, a really old version of Cosby are still is the latest, but I'm pretty sure it's the latest that I could find on their site. So anyway, uh, we have known in player for our H1.0.9. That's for our video player, which uses the in player as back background process. We also have in player proper. We do have port audio volume control. Okay, so it does come with pulls. I was wrong. We do have pulls. Let's see that was working up there. I was wrong. But it says no cards available for configuration, so it looks like 
it did not pick up on the virtual machine sound card whereas TrueOS did. That's interesting. That is interesting. Um, maybe different kernels, different modules, etc. Uh, I gave them both exactly the same sound card. And at the bottom here we have XF Burn again. We'll look at the mPlayer app. Yep, this is the mPlayer app hat that we all know and love. It's been around for a very long time. Plays almost everything. No VLC I know just on this version. So I might be good to download and install VLC as well, which you get the same work in the course. Assuming it works on normal hardware. I asked it to emulate what I've already got on my hardware though. To be fair, the ICH, the Intel HD, the Realtek HD <coughs> kind of chip that's in more or less every onboard machine nowadays apart from a few that aren't of course there are some that don't so anyway we come to office office we have a dictionary we have a document viewer we have LibreOffice base calc math and writer of course so we have the LibreOffice suite which is LibreOffice 5 which is going back a bit and we'll see exactly what version. Interesting, I've got a little line down here. Run the cross here, can you see that? That's interesting. I'm not quite sure where that's from. I wonder if it goes away if I make the screen full screen now. And that's the thing, I forgot to put the screen full screen. No one told me. Oh wait, you can't, can you? Anyway, let's have a look. 5.3.7.0, which is quite an old, I mean, last year. Uh, it's quite an old version of LibreOffice run 6.0.2 or 0.3, somewhere around there anyway, I'd have to have a look. Uh, <laughs> but that's quite an old version of LibreOffice going on there, but it would still do all the work you want it to do. Uh, just think got all the advanced features. So we have all the LibreOffice. Of course we've got the Orange Calendar and the Orange... I can't call it Orange, it would have been easier. Alright, global time, which is basically local time as you can see. And you can configure that to any other clock and so on. So, we have that as well. Okay, let's have a look at the settings. Now I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger, just, just while I'm in the settings. We'll have accessibility settings and the appearance, the look of your desktop. This is what I'm interested in. At the moment we're on Numix Dark. And we have Numix Full Dark. Numix Full Dark looks quite nice, especially with this light wallpaper. We have the SX light. Which is a bit too bright with the wallpaper, I must admit. We have XSCE of course. And we can go through all the XFCE kind of themes that we have going on there. Uh, XFC dusk is seriously dark but actually I'm going to go full dark just for the moment okay and as you can see it's changed all the actually that's quite nice now I quite like that myself that's a bit more to my taste in a way and that sounds like the way I bring out my eyes service that's for sure anyway uh, we can customize the panel of course notifications mesh touchpad and I'm just looking to see the backgrounds. Oh, and there are some lovely wallpapers here. Let's see if I can make up just a tad. Can I go the other way as well? Yes, I can. Oh, that's better. Four by four. Okay, let's have a look. These are quite nice. Very scenic views. These are the type of wallpapers I like actually, the scenic. Actually that one isn't too bad with the theme I've got either. It would just make the screen a bit dark, but it's nice. So we have a lot of long landscapes, including cityscapes. Of course these big open fisters as well I wish Microsoft didn't call one of their operating systems Vista 
This mystery is such a lovely word. And so, <laughs> got bloke there looking down over the uh, ravine there. Very nice. Really, oh, some high quality wallpapers on Ghost BSD. I might just take a few of these for myself. I am just saying. One near the Grand Canyon. Or I assume it's the Grand Canyon. And the first one is in the Vista. Which is really nice. Some amazing wallpapers. I do like the wallpapers. And there's the original one that came with. It came with Ghost BSD in the first place. Let's see what else we can change here. Uh, I assume we can change the icon set. I'm hoping we can actually. Oh, we have settings manager, settings editor. So anyway, we have all the settings there. I'm not going to mess about too much. But we have all the normal XFCE settings, which is rather cool. And in, under system, let's see what we've got under system. We have bulk rename. We have the cups manager for managing your printers. We have a bulk tracking system. We have G Smart Control. G Smart. We have Octa Package, which is a package front end to install stuff, which is good because now we'll have a look at this. Okay. So it's fetching the metadata, I'll just let it sync the repos, which hopefully won't take too long, because I want to see if I can get HTOP running to see how light this runs. Now I have the <coughs> now I have the plank running. Of course down the plank there you can see the little ghost symbol for Octo. And it's saying uh hello, what has been the problem here? It seems I have a disk full error. Okay, so let me just... Just do this a moment. And let's see what my disk get up full is. Uh, DFC in it. Let's have a look. No, I couldn't. Oh, I do. SSD is run it. Okay. Not really a big problem. Because we can go. Let's have a look. Oh, I've got no snapshots. So, why is the disk full? Okay, let's go to Oracle Virtual Machines. And well, what we'll do is, being as I have finished with this, There we go. We'll kill that off. Okay, and we'll unpause the machine because it's now got more than enough room. Now this is what happens when you have so many VMs. I have a few hidden as well uh, that need to be backed up. I haven't backed up yet, so looks like that's going to be my day to day. Let's see if we've got HTOP installed. We do have HTOP, but whether it's installed or not, I'm not sure. So if I right click that, I can install it. And I assume I can commit to that. Yes, please. Ah, confirm. Yes. So, okay, it's installing HTOP for me. And let me know that it didn't grant me the password because uh, it already remembered from last time. Okay, that's finished. So I need to do now. I haven't done any updates yet. Let's run hey stop, hey stop. Hey stop it's telling me that I'm using 770 megabytes out of 3.97 megs and 268. Which isn't too bad really. Isn't too bad at all. But there you go. That's an overview of Ghost BSD. Um, yeah, it runs well. It's not too bad actually. It won't have 
it's on YouTube, but I don't think we have things like OBS or whatever. Um, compared to TrueBSD, the TrueOS rather, that BSD, the default desktop is infinitely better. XFCE is infinitely better, in my humble opinion, than Lumina. And I understand in one of the comments there says, well, that's the basic version of Lumina. I thought, well, I could have tightened it up a bit, you know. And then there's a bit of extensive um, book for it. But out the box, I think Ghostbeat BSD has it on edge only because, and only because it looks more, it looks glorious actually, out the box. When the XFC really does. Uh, out of the two, this is the one I prefer, but TrueOS had, it, had its own um, <coughs> strengths as well. So, if you're fed up with Linux and Windows and Mac and you want to try something different, we've got two BSDs that may fill your boots with. Free boots to play with. Um, whether it runs on your hardware or not is another matter. Uh, the hardware compatibility on BSD isn't the same as Linux. So, uh, if it runs on your hardware, for your boots you may be pleasantly surprised, it is fast, there's no problem with that at all, so yeah, all good. Anyway, I hope you enjoy something, and I hope to see you all soon, and we'll see you at another time. Cheerio!